We hit up the administrator yesterday with a project that we've had in our uh, backyard for 12 to 15 years, something we called way back when I was writing the, the book with Bob Hoover about his fight, the Pilot's Bill of Rights. The fact that pilots, when they run afoul of the FAA, are subject to, at times, arcane administrative procedure, horrible discovery processes, so forth and so on, a minimum of the rights that they would have if, if they'd been stopped for traffic at you know, a red light or something. Um, he indicated that there was some room to talk about the whole thing with an increasing rancor, if you will, between uh, workers in the FAA on the field level and with pilots. In the last year, we've heard more reports than any few years combined. Is it time to look at the issue of how the FAA interacts with pilots whenever we get into a fight? You know, I'm 100% supportive of that kind of effort. I think it's absolutely crucial. I also think that Randy Babbitt as the administrator is somebody that we can do business with. He is a pilot. He understands these issues. Uh, I've found them to be responsive. Uh, Hank Krakowski is somebody who I think is responsive as the chief operating officer of the FAA. And I'd expand it because I think for many of our pilots it's TSA, it's Customs Border Patrol. You know, we have a, our own kind of hotline, if you will, our pilot information center. We get over 100,000 calls a year. Each of these agencies, when we pick up a problem, and oftentimes it's a training problem, it's, that the, it's not that the policy is wrong, it's being executed in the field by somebody who doesn't po properly know the policy. When we find a problem, we can call in, we can, get, we can take steps to get something changed or to help somebody. And our legal uh, assistance uh, program has been valuable to many people. I know some of them say, uh, you know, before you return that call, call us first, and I, and I think there's a lot of logic to that. Our, our team there has a lot of experience in dealing with the nuances of, you know, frankly, regulations that have been on the books a long time, and they can help pilots. But I, I'd, I'd join you with you in that effort to try to take a look at some of this. If you had to pin down the thing that worries you the most over the next year or two, the thing that might wake you up at 2 o'clock in the morning kind of going, okay, maybe it's time to go into work a little bit earlier. What are the things that concern you most at this stage? You know, I still, at this point in time, am most concerned about what concerned me when I started, and that's that opinion leaders and decision makers don't understand the full value of general aviation. And, and it, as a result, we're dealing with public, flawed public policy initiatives that if they better understood, they probably wouldn't initiate them to begin with. Now. The other problem that concerns me is this decline in the pilot population. It's very likely that, that with the trends uh, moving as they are, that as we get past the first of the year into the first quarter of next year, we'll see this pilot population with a current medical drop below 600,000. And that's, that's a real concern. And we're going to spend more of our time trying to better understand how we can draw people. It's one of the reasons I'm enthusiastic about uh, the, the closer working relationship with EAA, because I think Tom Poporesny, EAA, the Young Eagles program, I think they have, they have some ideas that we need to study and learn from and work together on. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. We've had a couple of bad shots in the, in the uh, <clears throat> posterior region, if you will, from folks like USA Today. It just keeps on coming, and the problem is, is that we're constantly in a reactive profile. Uh, we're, we're constantly having to respond. Uh, how do we change a reactive stance to a proactive stance? Where, where is that effort going? You know, sometimes I, I think we, we judge ourselves too harshly. Um, we, we take the bad article and we say, this is terrible and what can we do about it? But I've got stacks and stacks of positive articles out of our Let's Go Flying program where we've had people going around and talking to local news organizations, both broadcast and print. And they've developed wonderful stories. We've, we've uh, put, uh, put uh, correspondence on introductory flights, and they talk about flying. So we are proactive. We are out there We're with a big investment to tell the story about aviation. I wish I could prevent the, 
the single shot from being taken. I don't know what the problem is at USA Today. I'm determined to find out what it is. I've been around Washington for a couple decades, and my normal process is to go take the thing head on and go sit down and find out why somebody has such a, a contorted view of reality, and we're going to work on them a little bit. But uh, on the other hand, uh, a lot of our story is getting out. A lot of the organizations, all the organizations that represent uh, general aviation are very dedicated to being proactive, to being aggressive, to telling our story more effectively. I try to get out and talk to, to non-aviation groups. As thrilled as I am to be here and as much fun as it is to be with fellow aviators, we've all got to spend time talking to people who don't understand as much about our community. You can just preach to the choir for so long. You can, and, and, and it's important because you want to motivate. Right. You want to motivate, you want to engage people. It's important next year with an election year for people to, to speak out. Sometimes I think pilots are, are, are private. This is, this is a, a passion we, we keep to ourselves sometimes. I, I'm still amazed when people walk up to me, because I thought I talked about flying all the time. They walk up to me and say, we just never knew you were a pilot. And I've been one for 42 years. So we, we need to be uh, evangelists, if you will, but we need to take our message uh, outside of our community. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidine's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. When Phil Boyer stepped down and uh, headed off to uh, fly his Waco around uh, home in, in Ohio and all, AOP was very much at that point the house that Phil built. How does your leadership, how is it forming, how are you crafting, how are you putting your particular imprimatur on this organization? Well, you know, I have nothing but tremendous respect for Phil Boyer. Uh, I admired him as a member for 18 years. Uh, I had the, the luxury of a transition that lasted about six months and we got to become friends and got to know each other very well. He built a very solid organization, strong financially, strong people, built the membership up, so there's much to admire. Uh, and it's my privilege to be able to build on that. One of the things we're trying to do with something like AOPA Live here is to reach, again, a broader audience. We'll get 10,000 people here. We had a larger attendance on our first day yesterday than we did in San Jose last year. That's great. But we had 20,000 individual people coming to the site to look at what we're doing. You know the power of this kind of communication, and you've been a leader in that, in that regard. And, and we're trying to find more ways to reach out to connect with more of our members and get them active and engaged and I think that's part of it. Part of it is communications and the other part is really working um, hand in hand with with the other associations. Uh, AOPA has been very successful. Uh, we have a, a, a strong capability to deliver a message but the message needs to be consistent throughout the community and so I've, I've really tried to embrace the idea of collaboration and working with the others. Craig, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Good to be with you.